Hi, I'll be showing you today how to paint some of my folk flowers and this is my practice run anyhow for the class I'm teaching on Tuesday. So I tried to pick something simple and we're painting hyacinths and what we're gonna need is number 10 brush, the pointy one, round one, and number 6 brush. So I got both of these at Aldi's. So you can do it on a cheap. Um, I'm using Hooker's Green, Deep Green. That's a uh, Montmartre Dimension one. Uh, Phthalo Blue. Again, you can get these at the reject shop. They work quite well, just to dry very quickly. Medium Yellow. We're also going to use Chromacryl Medium Bodied White. That one is really good white. And a little bit of Floetrol that I'm keeping here is, is a gliding medium. So Americans talk about gliding medium. I talk about Floetrol. It does pretty much the same thing and works really, really well. So you don't need to worry about it. So what we need to do first is take our Floetrol, dip your brush in and run it. So all the bristles are coated. So all the paint will slip off easily. We'll take our hookers green. Mix it down and add a bit of yellow to soften it down. I don't like using pure paints out of the tube as they are. I like changing them a bit and keep adding the yellow. So on one side, we'll add a bit, a bit of yellow and it's not perfectly mixed. And one side will end up with a green. And it ends up as a mush kind of thing. And you also still dip it in a bit of yellow. So we're going to do first the background leaves. So we do that by putting the brush down at about height and dragging it a little bit and then slowly increasing the pressure as we go along and then slowly dragging it down. It's a bit transparent but it's a problem with the cheapy paints. So I'll just do it again. One more layer of it and you'll get the same effect. And Floetrol does it too. And you end up with this beautiful leaf. And this one is in the background, so it doesn't really matter much. And then we go again for a few more leaves in the background. Because Hassians always have these beautiful, beautiful leaves behind. And I know there's a forever leaf. I'm remixing the paint. Reason for it is every leaf is not the same color. I'm tired of with a full cart everything looking exactly the same. It shouldn't be. Everything changes. Nothing is always exactly. So drag a little bit back. Increase the pressure as you go along. Give it a little bit of curve. It makes it just nicer. And do it again. These brushes, because they're all the ones, they don't carry much. So make sure that the brush is fully always loaded. This is going to be in the background, so it really doesn't matter much. And the front ones are going to be done differently. These are going to be mostly covered. Make sure that the brush is always fully loaded. If you don't load it correctly, you'll end up with a whole heap of problems. When I teach other painting, I tell them always paint with the tip of the brush. With this one, no. Load the brush fully and have fun. Be a child. And then drag down. You'll notice that the folk art uses a lot of paint compared to any other art what you're doing unless you're doing impasto painting um, very thick layer textured painting and that's the only time that you're going to use as much paint <laughs> or you have a toddler that just get dabbed into your paint set there's a few leaves in the background these are just going to be behind the flower. Most of it is going to be covered. 
and they're usually a good practice run for your brush. They don't have to be perfectly spaced out. The world is not perfectly spaced out. Nothing is perfect. And these little imperfections make it special. I think that should do for the leaves and we gotta give it a little bit of break so it dries this is painted on um, acrylic pores I do a lot of them so I have the ones that didn't turn out quite nice and you can't use them as their own backgrounds so I use them for painting so this is one way of using the fluid acrylics is to paint on them and I thought mm, the other one is kind of crafty what would go on it so I figured I would chuck the acrylic pores on it and they look quite good. These are gonna look nice with the flowers. So these were done over six months ago and they're just sitting there. Okay, this is my second one. I'm gonna start slowly soon on the flowers. So we're gonna decide on which side is the light. So you see this is my coffee mug. We're gonna pretend it's a light so that's where it comes from. And where the paints are is a dark one. For that, we're going to use Thalo Blue and White. So Thalo Blue, I notice it has a lot of pigment. It's really, really strong. So a bit of floral to make it glide easier. And we're just doing a five-pointed star shape. It's They don't have to be perfect, and they're going to look fine in the end. So fill up the brush, I don't know if you can see this, you can't, with blue. Sorry, I can't fit more on a table. It's full as it is, let me try to slide it, but then I'm limited for space for painting. That's my cat making a mess in the background. And a bit of titanium white, the white on it. So add a bit more white in the paint slowly, till you get the shade that you like. And just think you're working from the dark to white. So first few flowers are going to be dark and the uh, right hand side is going to be dark and left one is going to be light. I see blue bulbs are kind of wide and they have a lot of blue in it and they slowly lighten. So. And you're going to paint over them over and over again. So one, two, three, four, and five. Load it up again. A bit of white. Why not? And both. One, two, three, four, five. So basically what we're doing is just doing the imprint of the brush down. Mix more paint with a little bit of floor troll to make it runny. Add a bit of white to it. Why not? See how I'm leaving always a little bit of white on a tip? It gives it that nice drag and doesn't make the petals uniform. It makes it more funky. So we go one, two, three, four, five. And again, one, two, Three, four, five. When you add the middle bit to the flower, they're gonna come together and they're gonna look quite nice. So again, we keep loading the brush. It always has to be loaded without a break. <laughs> well, that's my method of doing it. I found, I tried many different paints and I tried many different methods and this one works for me. Every person is different, so one, two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, four, five. And keep going. Some are darker. Four. Try not to get a straight edge, so occasionally you'll have a flower that's sticking out to the side. 
and I want to bring some of these back on top of these so it's okay to redo them and just keep going white it's too dark for me everybody has their own method of doing these this is my method I picked it up by checking whole heap of YouTube videos so and I found not all of them work a lot of them miss bits and pieces and I know that's a custom in my country when I give you a cake recipe they forget to tell you a few things same thing with the youtubers well I'm not forgetting anything I'm just showing you as it is One. And keep going maybe there's a petal hanging out there and they get brighter as they go more towards the left some of them are brighter some of them are darker because it depends how light hits them. If you were trying to do this as a traditional paint, you would be painting each petal separately, or you would just dab it on and give it impression of it, illusion of it. Folk art doesn't work the same way. The beauty of that whole folk art, I always thought it was crap till I tried it. And realize how hard it is and actually taught me a lot because with a folk art what it teaches you is that um, you have to know your brushes and you have to know your paint you can't just go ahead and say I'm doing this no I can't fudge it you have to know it and it's quite technical sometimes but it's fun This one looks like it's gonna be a big and chunky one. I don't plan the designs, some people do. I just go for it. If it turns out, it turns out. If it doesn't, I'm gonna do another acrylic pour over it. That's what I was going to do with the board anyhow. With a folk art, I use a lot of thalo blue, and I try to stick with the simple colors. Just making, as a friend of mine says, the folk art is just about making lots of little commas. Well, sometimes it's commas, sometimes it's not. It's my kids arguing in the background. All the flowers don't need to be the same size. Nature didn't create everybody the same. She created us unique. Each one of us different. The 
doesn't matter if one goes on top of the other. Just keep going. That's my cat going into my craft supplies and I'm getting grumpy at him. He's taking all my stuff away. You'll find him in the photos of my studio quite a lot. He likes hiding there. Fix up this one. Sorry for the noise. A few more petals on the bottom doesn't hurt. It. Keep building up again. See how you build it up slowly. It just takes time. That's my paint that was left over from yesterday. I feel bad about wasting it, so I'm using it with white because it comes in a big tub. You can squeeze a lot of it out, and that's it. Don't forget flowers come in different colors, different shades of blue. Some of them are darker, some of them are lighter. Depends where the light is hitting them. When I started painting this, I was very uniform and I was struggling with the concept of uniformity. And I decided, oh, well, stuff it. I'm just going to do it my way. And I like the result. See, I don't care if I cover the flower or any other bits behind. If I like something, I will bring it back. And it really, really, really doesn't matter. This is like a toddler loading the brush. But that's the way it works. So it still has blue on it and has dab of white because I'm really going lighter. Just trying to think what would work for the workshop. That would be simple enough for anybody to do. So because it takes a while to learn to load the brush and do the do the strokes. A lot of people get obsessed with their little perfections. There's a few petals hanging there behind it. <coughs> Excuse me. And also that's my kids screaming in the background. They're playing Minecraft and having fun. This is my old wreck brush, but instead of using the front, I'm just going to be using the back tip. And I'm going to add a bit of yellow to the middles. I think the middle of the flower is, if I can still figure it out. See how it brings it all back? 
It makes it all work. Just keep finding them and keep putting the dots. This can be quite a peaceful experience. Sorry, having cold. If those that are interested in my folk art or my earrings that I do from all the different stuff, I'll be at Ainsbury Market this month. Uh, come and support my artwork so I can paint more. I can only buy paint more if I buy more art supplies and I can only buy more art supplies if you guys buy my work. Next week is going to be hell. We have other workshops for the folk art and I'm holding a whole heap of workshops for the kids. And that's going to take a lot of my time. And Tuesday, I have three workshops with the kids, one with adults. Should be interesting if I survive that day. I think I'm going to be recovering for a month after it. I kind of scheduled it funny. But that's okay. It'll be still fun. I think that's enough yellow dots, don't you think? Now we've got to wait for this for a little bit to dry, so I'm going to pause it and I'm going to come back to do the front leaves. Okay, it's dried up a little bit now, so I had a bit of coffee and used the heat gun to dry it up a bit, speed up the drying. And um, we're going to mix up again our hooker's green with a bit of yellow. Make sure it's not all even. I'm using size 10 round brush this time, so... The smaller one is for the size 6 is for the flowers, size 10 is for here. Usually you find your brushes that suit you. Each one is different, so don't worry too much about it. Don't worry if your sizes don't match. Just make sure you get two different sizes. One is wider one for the leaves and narrower one for up leaves. So it sometimes has... Let's see how we're going to do this one. Maybe one more upright one it goes here. Doesn't matter that I'm covering the part of the flower, it's just a part of the flower. And now we're gonna do a different one. I was just practicing on the side of the paper a second ago, seeing if I can do it that way. I make it up as I go along. Most of the artists do the same thing, they won't admit to it, but they do it. They just make it up and keep going. So, we'll start this way and then we'll finish it. And then we'll go back and fix up the leaf. That bent. Because sometimes you end up with the leaves that bend. Where's the other one? Sometimes they go up straight as well. Well, green, floor troll, fun, <laughs> bit of yellow, bit more yellow. <laughs> Let's have fun. Life is not perfect. Leaves are not perfect. They don't need to be. So we always start from left and right and we slowly end up with the other ones. That's it, that should do it. It's pretty easy. Let's bring a bit more highlights into these so I don't have a solid yellow tip. So, there we go. A bit of yellow on it. Same with this one. A bit of yellow through it. So as you're dragging, you're creating these drag marks that look like a bends in a leaf. A 
open this one. Why not? Same with this one. There's a bit of highlight. Oops. Covered that because that's just from the flower below, it wasn't fully dry. Some people will decorate it with ribbons at all, but not me. This is it. It's just simple. Very plain and doesn't take long. Anyhow, thank you for watching.